It is the third Sunday of Easter. Um, Calendar-wise, things to remind you of for um, this week, there's a Christian formation meeting on Monday night. Um, it is hybrid meeting. If you'd like to come and be in person, you can do that. We also have a Zoom option. Um, if you want to be part of that and just haven't been in that yet, let me know and we will uh, get you connected there. Wednesday uh, at noon is the Joy Luncheon. If you are interested in that, please make sure you have your RSVP in by Monday to the church office. Next week is Noisy Offering Week, and why we want to really bring this one to your attention, we changed who we were giving to. Um, with the um, key bridge um, falling, we have changed our um, donating group to the um, Seafarers International, which is the Pan-Lutheran Organization of Spiritual Care for the Ports along the eastern coast. So there are chaplains that um, end up uh, on the numerous ports, including the port of Baltimore. So we thought it would be appropriate to give um, our uh, noisy offering to them this month. So please do remember that. Two other things on the inside of your um, announcements. Uh, Ladies Spring Fling Dinner is May 8th. Uh, you can get tickets after service from Mr. Lee. He'll be hanging outside there. Um, we need the RSVP for those by April 22nd. Uh, next Sunday, our women's Bible study starts up again at the Durer Farm. Um, uh, we are doing a study called Common Ground, studying biblical rivalries um, so that we can get along and learn how to get along. Thanks, Dad. Um, when things are not going well. Uh, so uh, please join us for that. If you have questions about getting the study or whatnot, let me know. Um, please, again, look at your announcements for all the things that are happening. Um, we had council on Monday night, so I invite uh, Secretary Bruce McIntosh to come forward to give you the take five highlights of what happened. Good morning. As Pastor Diane mentioned, um, each month following the, the council meeting, one of the council members is asked to present the highlights of the council meeting. This is my month. I've been chosen to present these highlights. There are five items that uh, I've been asked to uh, present to you. The first one is an update on the Middletown Food Bank project. For those of you that were at the uh, congregational meeting in January, uh, you will recall that uh, there was some reference to a lease, leasing some of the property of the church for the use of the food bank to establish a, uh, a uh, food bank, a, uh, what do we call it, uh, building. It's been determined that maybe a lease is not the appropriate term for this uh, project, and they've decided that a memorandum of agreement is a better word for the document. A little progress has been made on that, uh, and hopefully in the May meeting we will have a copy of that memorandum of agreement to review. The second item was a resolution or a proposal made by the nomination committee to uh, make some changes in the way we select uh, council members. It's been rather difficult over the years to get individuals to volunteer to do this. So there have been a number of changes that the nomination committee has recommended. Now I want to note that several of these changes will require changes to the Constitution and bylaws and uh, the congregation will need to approve these changes before they can take effect. But these are the items that the nomination committee has recommended. The number of council members should, re should be reduced from 12 to no less than 8. Service term should be reduced from 3 years to 2 years. Monthly meetings for the council should be reduced from 12 to 10 per year. 
council uh, liaison committee responsibilities should be reduced. We have six standing committees, the finance, mutual ministry, personnel, property, cemetery board, and the food bank. These would be the committees or boards that would have liaisons. The nomination committee will include retiring members of the council and the pastors on the nomination committee. Potential candidates will be asked in person and they will be provided with a written brochure describing the role and the responsibilities and allow a maximum of one week, if needed, to consider serving. And lastly, the search process will start in June of each year. The third item that the council had asked me to present to you was that uh, there were several new standard operating procedures or policy manuals that uh, were brought up for council approval. The first one was a new committee manual that explained the responsibility of committee members. And the second one was an updated version of the emergency response plan. The fourth item are some things that the pastors have asked that we make you aware of regarding Lent, Lent and Easter service. These are attendance joys. The average midweek Lenten service attendance of 69 was up from 64 in 2023. Monday, Thursday attendance 95 was up from 74 in 2023. Good Friday attendance of 83 remained the same as in 2023. And the combined Easter service, including the vigil, was 385. This was up from 353 in 2023. It should be noted, however, that the timing of the school spring break directly influences Easter attendance. This year, the break followed Easter week, and so we rejoice for the increase, no matter the reason. And lastly, the subject of the Synod Assembly Conference, which will occur in Westminster, is on June 7th and 8th. Friday will be all day. Saturday the 8th will be a half day. All members are welcome to attend. Travel to the conference will be in the Zion Band. And anyone who is interested in attending should contact the church office let us know if you'd like to go. Now, if you have any questions regarding the meeting or want to give us your input, please contact one of the council members or myself. I'll, I will be here after the service if there's anything that you would like to bring to our attention. Thank you. Any other um, announcements or prayer requests? All right. We will prepare ourselves for worship then with the prelude.
Addison. She playing for us this morning. Thank you, Addison. Lovely job. Welcome. Good job. Please stand as you're able. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing together hymn number 522. 522. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also be. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. I want to give you a little background before, before I start today. Right before this, Peter had healed a person who couldn't walk. And there were people who were very upset. Now, this comes after the resurrection, after Jesus' ascension, and after Pentecost. Now, I don't know about you, but, but if God decided to help me walk better, I would be thrilled even though it was a Sunday. <laughs> and Peter, being Peter, does not mince words. And he really has it up. So I give you Acts 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the, the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or poverty we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked him to have a murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself made this man strong, who you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. We will be reading Psalm 4 responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions, seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Well then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifice and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Thank you again, Pat. Yes, that was totally, oh, Peter. Who didn't want to be in the room when that was being said. He was, shrewd, min mincing words, no. And boy, you killed the author of life. Not preaching on that, but good, good, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Um, I want to invite you this morning, and it's funny, doing, uh, this is our liturgy, we have 10 different settings, 10 different um, musical settings for liturgy in our hymnal. Um, and setting three in our new hymnal is one of the old ones from uh, the, the Lutheran Book of Worship, the Green Hymnal. So even doing this setting really takes me back. Um, I want to invite you for a minute, those of you who may have had this experience, I'm sorry if you haven't, um, to think back to when you were younger in church, and you used to sit in worship with, um, as I told, 9 o'clock, we do things a lot differently than we used to, Right? You used to sit with your hymnal to follow the service because we, we used our hymnals. And I want you to think about going through the service. We haven't really changed the, the liturgy, the order, the order of it. Um, I, I don't know about you, but here's how it was for little Pastor Diane. Uh, I remember sitting, my father was to my left, then my older sister, then me, and then my little sister. Mom was in the choir loft, so... But I, I remember sitting, I remember the very beautiful uh, goldenrod cushion that I would sit on, because the congregation was built and remodeled in the 70s. Uh, so I remember the distinct colorations. Um, I remember sitting with my LBW, and going through the service, being little, um, there were lots of words. And some of them I could read, but it was beautifully broken up. I'm sorry I don't know the service book and hymnal as well, but... Even in the LBW, there, it was very nicely broken up. There was back and forth between the pastor and the people. Um, there was some red rubrics. Those are Pastor Matt's favorites. Those are the ones that tell you what to do and how to do things. I remember going through, and on a Sunday morning, we're little. Give us a little grace here. Everybody gets a little grace because we're all small. After like each part of the service in my head, it would be a little, check, we made it through that part. Check, we made it through that part. I'm behaving, I'm not getting in trouble. Check, we made it through the next part. Um, when we got through the sermon, it was like, big check. We're like halfway there, yes. Um, and um, then I remember getting to the creed. Now again, remember, little, little, not good at reading yet. That's a lot of words. This is gonna take forever. But we do it, and we say the same words every week. It doesn't really change. Okay, yes, we get to some changes. Those of you, again, who might have done the Athanasian Creed, whew, God bless you, talk about lots of words. But I remember each week, it's like, okay, we got through the sermon, but then we'd get to the creed. It's like, oh, got to get through the creed. Again, these things haven't changed that much. Maybe some of you still sit here in your minds going, check, we made it through that part. Check, we made it through the sermon. That's quite all right. We understand. It's important that we do these things and we keep the order. And I have to tell you, I think so far our favorite Lent, my favorite Lent, was the second one we were here where we broke down each part of the, the worship service and kind of why do we do this? Where does it come from in the Bible? That was really meaningful. And I think um, the creed this year, doing the small catechism and thinking about these parts again, the creed is such an important part of what we do. 
well, why? There's how many other things in our worship service? Why is this important? When you think about it, the creed is a brief snapshot of everything we believe in. Now, I say a snapshot. Remember, when we think about God, nothing will ever fully encompass. We cannot have words enough to describe who God is, what God is. However, the creed gives us this beautiful snapshot of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, of what we believe about this one who creates, who redeems us, and who continues to call us into being community and one people together. It's beautiful. But what does that have to do with today? We make our way today, Easter 3, into the third gospel, We're in year B, which is the year of Mark. In the year of Mark, since Mark is so short, in the Easter season, we get a little bit of everybody. So the first week on Easter Sunday, we had Mark. Last week, we had John. This week, we got Luke. So we get Luke's version of what's going on on that first day coming off of Easter. Uh, Jesus has risen. He's shown up on the road to Emmaus. I love that about Luke, the Emmaus story. He's shown up there. And now those two have come back, and they're with all the people. And just kind of like John, it's kind of just like John. They're all sitting together, and Jesus shows up. And he greets them with my greeting, my favorite greeting, peace be with you. And what's different in Luke is they think they're seeing a ghost. They are terrified, but they think they're seeing a ghost. And we get a nice little, again, another snapshot of historically, how do you tell if someone's not a ghost? Well, they have a body. Jesus says, see my hands, my feet, my side, see my hands, hands. Then, someone who is not a ghost can most certainly eat. We heard in the story, too, like right before, well, we didn't hear, but the the Road to Emmaus story, that's exactly, he's having a meal with them. They come to know him in the breaking of the bread. He's eating a meal. He has to eat. So he is not a ghost. He eats the broiled fish in front of them. He has his hands, his feet. And then he continues to do as he does in Luke. He opens their minds to the scriptures. Again, just as he did with the road to Emmaus. He tells them everything. I told you this. Let me remind you again. I told you that everything that's in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, that's new here, the Psalms, this must be fulfilled. The Messiah must suffer and die and rise, and then because of that, the forgiveness of sins can be shared with the whole world. Just like in John, that Easter gift of repentance and forgiveness is there. And then he says, the last line for our reading today. To all of them, you are witnesses to these things. You are witnesses to everything I taught you, to a God who creates, redeems, and continues to bring community. You are witnesses to the gifts of repentance and forgiveness, You are witnesses. But of course, we know that these stories aren't just about these people. They're about us. So it's not just those people who are witnesses. You are witnesses to these things. You are witnesses to this God. You are witnesses to repentance and forgiveness. Friends, when we each week say the creed, we get the snapshot of the moment to be witnesses. We have a little piece of a way we testify to being witnesses to this God. Oh, yes, but not just that, right? Because it's not just about lovely to see you all here, but we need to witness beyond this place. How do we witness every day to the life that God has given us, to the goodness of creation, to the fact that we are redeemed and saved and that we can share that gift with others, that they may have life and have it in abundance, that we may come together again 
and be in community and lift one another up that we can hear about God's love and receive it over and over. We are witnesses to these things. It is an invitation and a gift. As you sit there today, I'll stand and say those words. We're using the Nicene a little bit longer than the apostles. May you remember that you are witnesses to these things. May these words come out of our mouth and not just be a rote reading, but a reminder that we are witnesses to this living God. And we take this living God with us when we go, that this whole world may know God's goodness. May it be so. Amen. We sing together hymn number 635, 635. Responsible word of God, let's confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news.
O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers as we share the holy meal that is the body and the blood of Jesus given to us. Let us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our elder, you care for all our children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those whose journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially Regina, Dick, Margaret, Bob, Tim, Joe, Beth, and all those in our hearts, thoughts, and prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you, Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus, promise that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus, that we are held in your love forever. Into your hands, most merciful God, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share saying God's peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ and the Messiah for our tithes and offering. Peace with you.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here to be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. That we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who takes away, who gave Himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Aunt Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses on the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Indeed, holy, almighty, and merciful God, you give life and bring new life in your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you as a God of promise, delivering your chosen people, Israel, from this captivity and slavery and giving them new life in the land of promise, faithful Abraham. And though they experienced the death of exile, you remain faithful to your promise, sending the prophets and giving your children renewed life in their own land. We praise you for Mary, born of... We praise you for Jesus, born of Mary by the power of your spirit, the firstborn of the dead, who, though the exile of his suffer through the exile of his suffering on the cross, served as victim and priest. And through him you have delivered us from exile and captivity to sin and death, giving us the joys of life of lasting, fulfilling all covenants and promises. Send your Holy Spirit to breathe new life into us and to bless these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of our living host, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who on the night in which he was handed over took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, before you we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We offer to you, most holy God, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, remembering this Easter all you have done through the passion and resurrection of your Son. In this holy communion, unite us in the sacrifice of our eternal high priest. Through the promise he made to his disciples, we await his final coming to fulfill all of life and to make new the heavens and the earth. 
as we now gather to receive this holy sacrament of Christ's body and blood, strengthen in your mercy and grant us the fullness of your salvation and peace. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Taste and see that our Lord is good. Congregation may be seated, and as you do so, let's sing together the Agnus Day. first, and then you all, and then Ms. Leslie will switch over and we'll come up for you all. Does that work? Cool. And Bobby's going to serenade us.
Please rise as you're able. The by and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn, 382.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we go out into the world, let us remember our mission. As a people of God, we share Christ's love, grow in faith, and serve others. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Hallelujah.